Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on another informative weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host Adrian Atkinson. On this half hour journey, we are in the West with the CPFSA to kickstart its school tour and getting tips on financial planning for your child's education. Plus, get health wise about your salt consumption. Sit back and relax with us for these and more exciting features packaged for your viewing pleasure. Hey Anna, what's up? Girl, me just get someone for jury duty, but me don't want to have anything to do with courthouse. This is your chance to help someone get justice. Plus, you can learn about the court system and serve your country. And since when regular somebody like me get called for jury duty? Well, once you're between 18 and 70, your name is on the voters list. Are you have a TRN? Them can summon you. Contact the Court Administration Division for further information at 876-754-8337 or visit the Supreme Court website at www.supremecourt.gov.jm. Brought to you by the Justice Undertakings for Social Transformation Program, a project funded by Global Affairs Canada. Children are the future, and to ensure the future remains bright and desirable, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, is embarking on a series of school tours to bring home the message of child protection and care. Take a look. May is a child month and the Child Protection and Family Services Agency kicked things off at several schools in St. Anne with Mr. Protector. Just come to we visit those schools to get the reaction of children, teachers and parents to the activities. These and more in this episode of Western Roundup. Stay with us. Yes, listen up. Children Voices Matter. That's the theme for Child Month 2022. This month is an extra special month for you. And the CPFSA continues to ensure that all children are given an equal opportunity for their voices to be heard. This was the message as they kicked off their series of child protection school tours on Read Across Jamaica Day at the Bamboo Primary and Junior High School in St. Anne. Sure that children voices are heard we we protect our children from all sort of abuse if a mother do it father do it anybody at all do it, we try to protect you right your voices matter at cpfsa the tour was accompanied by Mr. Protector, the CPFSA mascot, designed by Richard Small in 2019, a grade 6 student at the institution. In 2019, we launched a competition among primary schools. We wanted children to contribute to the idea of a mascot that would spread the child protection message across Jamaica. We plan to use this mascot to go around to schools, to talk with children and engage with them around child protection issues. What's child abuse? What do you think that is? First of all, is it good or is it bad? Bad! So in 2019 we launched the competition and in early 2020 um, it was, the, the, the winner was awarded. So out of 91 entrants, we awarded um, the top prize to Richard Small of Bamboo Primary. Richard's idea found favor among all the judges. We're going to introduce our mascot who was named by Richard you know, from Bamboo Primary. The idea brought for, forward by Richard was the idea of a protector. So Mr. Protector is a superhero and this superhero is not only one defending the rights of children but one with whom children could easily identify. He was cuddly, he was friendly and if you see it, you'll see that he's a bunny rabbit. Because of COVID, we really couldn't launch or, you know, bring the mascot around the island. Schools were not in session. But now, the things are opening up and we decided to celebrate or to observe Child Month by going around and, you know, really bringing Mr. Protector to the students in schools. So we are starting with Bamboo Primary, Richard School, and we are ensuring that every single region will see our mascot and will engage with our mascot. 
Richard was happy to see his work come to life. I felt great and proud of myself. I put on a lot of hard work in it met and, and tried to work my best. My mom, she helped me to give a name for the mascot and helped me draw with the features. The CPFSA also used the opportunity to remind students of the 211 hotline and its purpose. To report all child abuse. The 211 is a free reporting line. You can access it by calling um, from any um, service provider. It is also operated on a 24-hour basis. So whether you have credit or not, children can reach out to us if they feel as if they are, they are at risk or they believe they are in need of any kind of care or protection. All reports are treated confidentially. So anything you call to report, you can guarantee that it will be treated confidentially and we will respond. We're not only here to get the reports, but to act on them to ensure that every child receives the care or the protection that they deserve. Over at the Free Hill All Age and the Priory Primary and Infant Schools, the students were equally excited to see the CPFSA team and to participate in the day's activities. They were also eager to share what they learned. You must not hurt your children. If there's a child abuse, you must call 211. I learned that anything that is happening, or I can always speak to somebody. There's always somebody there that can help me to resolve the situation. You have sexual abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, and physical abuse. Those are just the little ones that I know. I've learned that you should never hide whether you're abused or not and you should always go and contact somebody. I know that child abuse is not a good thing and if anything happens to you, any type of child abuse happens to you, you should always call CPFSE. The teachers too were delighted for the reinforcement the children received. I am certain that the children are happy to have you here because, you know, in Jamaica we know of what is happening where children are concerned and the children are aware of what is happening to them also. So having you come in here, the children are more aware of some of the things that they should do or can do as it relates to child abuse. It was a pleasure hosting the CPFSA at our school with the mascot. Such an experience, the children enjoy themselves, they now understand and now it is now riveted in their minds that they should call 211 in case they feel threatened. Oh my gosh, it was good. It has opened the eyes of the children. They are now aware of some of the abuses that are out there. I have taught them, but with the song and so on, I'm certain they would have learned a lot. National Children's Day will be celebrated on May 20. For more information regarding Child Month celebrations, visit the National Child Month Committee social media pages at NCMCJA. Just call to that's all for the program today. As we continue to celebrate a child month, let us protect our children while reminding them that their voices matter. And children, remember you can call 211 at any time to report cases of abuse. As usual, thank you for joining us for Western Roundup, where we take you from the corners of St. Elizabeth to the hilly terrains of St. Anne. Remember to send your feedback to jismobe at jis.gov.jm. Until next time, take care. We're still with the CPFSA, this time boarding its Smiles Mobile. Let's see where the journey takes us. 
On the outside, it looks like any regular 30-seater coaster bus. Once inside, you quickly realize that there is more that meets the eye. Welcome aboard the CPFSA Smiles Mobile. Smiles Mobile is a retrofitted 30-seater coaster bus. On board, we have two confidential counseling areas where both officers sit. We have refrigerator and microwave on board. We have a sink area for the kids to wash their hands. We have filing cabinets where we store our files. The main objective of the Smiles Mobile is, is to screen those children who fall within the child protection system. And so we carry out our screening and interventions right across the length and breadth of Jamaica. Today we've joined the CPFSA Mobile Mental Health Unit at one of their sessions at the Glen Hope Nursery in Kingston to witness how the Smiles Mobile provides a convenient and confidential safe space for these wards of the state. Welcome, come on in and have a seat. Today we're going to be doing some coloring. The children love the bus when we visit the facilities, they're very excited. As you can see, it's very colorful, it's child-friendly, it's air-conditioned, and so it's a lot of comfort for them. And we provide this safe space for them so they can come on and express themselves, and we provide the necessary interventions as well. All children within the state's care should be screened on an ongoing basis, and so we screen children on an ongoing basis. We have our regular screening where we screen selected facilities based on presenting issues and we also from time to time have to respond to matters that are current in the news. So say for example a child was affected by crime or violent situations we will go in and screen and do our interventions. We use several uh, screening tools or instruments. Um, one of our main screening tools from it was established in 2013 have been the Strengths and Difficulties Questionnaires, the SDQ. We also have an internally developed a mental health screening tool and this is a structured clinical interview that we do with with each child and we have several instruments from time to time to screen for anxiety, depression and several other mental issues. Our interventions are informed by our screening results and so from time to time we may have to have interventions with the staff, we have psychoeducational interventions with staff you know to enhance their capacity to deal with the children that we have and sometimes we have individual interventions with the children on board of course and we also have group modality interventions. The Mobile Mental Health Unit currently uses three Smiles Mobiles to provide therapeutic services to the 52 government and private child care facilities across Jamaica. Over the years, they have made progress and are seeing great results. Well, we have seen a lot of positive results where when we do the screening and we identify the issues and we provide the interventions, we see where it has helped them greatly, where children have um, gotten better grades in school, there are less issues within the facility in terms of behavioral challenges and mental health issues. So the interventions have been really helpful. And that's all we have for you today on the CPFSA Smiles Mobile. Our tour of the bus ends here, but its journey continues, bringing smiles and much needed therapeutic support to children in state care. If it's not already clear, we're giving a lot of attention to our children because this is their month as we celebrate them. Let's also plan for their future, specifically their education. Here are some financial planning tips for your child's education. Hello everyone, I'm Zeva Campbell, an educator, financier and entrepreneur. Education is very important to our development and can take years to achieve the highest level. It is also very costly and some persons will have a difficult time finding the money up front, especially in the absence of careful financial planning. So, within the next few minutes, I want to share a few steps that will guide your approach to financing your child or children's education. Let's start with 
When should we begin that financial planning? According to the Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Although there is no perfect time to begin planning for your child's tertiary education, starting as early as possible is the best way to ensure you are prepared financially and avoid the common pitfalls. Having a step-by-step -step plan is the best way to ensure that you are able to finance your child's education without sacrificing your personal financial plan. There are several things to consider when planning for your child or children's education. However, most notable among them are parents must identify the future costs of tertiary education and have a clear sum in mind of what their target will be. Then work their way backwards to present and see how best they can earn to realize the future goal. A clear financial plan should be put in place either by the parents themselves or with the help of a professional financial planner. The discipline is what follows the plan. To ensure that all financial objectives are being taken care of in terms of allocations and meeting the various timelines set out by the plan. Once all incomes and expenditures remain in accordance to the plan, by the time your child reaches maturity, their tertiary education funding would have been readily available to offset the costs associated. Now your options could be savings or investments. Both are good, but let's look at them closely. There are basically two ways to make money. One, you work for money. Two, your money works for you. So savings is the process of putting aside a portion of your income for future use. In this case, we are talking about education. So if you're going to save, you need to put aside some of your income to ensure that you're able to offset the cost of your education in the future. While investment is you putting money aside that will generally earn interest over the period of time that you put it aside for. Therefore, having a plan inclusive of savings and investments can put parents in a better position to offset the future expenses of education. Firstly, if you are not financially literate, I would advise you to seek assistance from a professional financial advisor to ensure you are getting qualified advice that will help you achieve your goal. Here are the five steps of planning your child's education. Step one, set target date. Step two, find current cost of the education. Step three, find target amount. Step four, estimate the returns you can generate. And step five, calculate the monthly contribution. Here are some additional things to consider. A partner plan is a very good thing. Creating a savings account and our fixed deposit. Invest in one of the various educational products available from a preferred financial institution. And maintain your discipline while ensuring that the projected amounts are allocated at the appropriate time to achieve your financial goal effectively and efficiently. One of the most common mistakes that parents make is, is that they think that they need this large lump sum. But as the Jamaican proverbs go, every make a make a muckle, so therefore they can start small and then build onwards. Now another mistake that they normally would make is, is the fact that they think that um, savings alone would, 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 would help in terms of offsetting the costs in the future. What I, I would recommend is for them to use a culmination of both the savings and investments in order to achieve their, their financial goal. So the first disadvantage I want to speak about is the inability to set financial goals. So you not being able to set goals will also lead to you being demotivated and, and lack the knowledge that is required to achieve that goal. And as a result of that demotivation and that lack of, of knowledge that is required, then there is no direction. So we consider it to be a lack of direction, right? And if there's a lack of direction, then, then what will happen is that poor financial outcomes will, will, will be the result of that. In concluding, planning for your child or children's education is not just dependent on the numbers. Rather, it's a combination of several factors, namely social, personal beliefs, 
religious, your way of approaching and general outlook at life. However, the cost of education on a rise, parents are looking at various investment vehicles to secure their child or children's future. Judicious planning for your children's future is essential and empowering them with an education plan is a wise thing to do. Start to reap maximum benefits very early. Create a sustainable future for them to bloom in. What are we here full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> They say the people them, you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people them free paper, oh you no, know? them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panther, collect you know? medal. Come on, tap, we did them, oh, you know? The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre why pre <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration yeah. if you don't know the app to get the updates then before we close out today's magazine we want to make sure you stay in good health so follow me up this path to good health we are exploring sodium or salt in our diet if you are one who loves the extra sprinkle of salt on your food take heed most of us are very familiar with salt the most common is table salt. The chemical name is sodium chloride and it's a common component of the food supply in most countries. There are several other sources of salt, including monosodium glutamate or MSG as it's commonly known and sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. Salt is commonly used to flavor food and is used as a binder, stabilizer, as well as preservative. Sodium, or salt as we know it, plays an important role in the proper functioning of our body, with just about 500 milligrams needed daily to carry out normal body functions, such as water balance and nerve conduction. However, most of us are consuming much more than is needed. Global estimates suggest that persons consume between 9 to 12 grams of salt per day, which is one and a half to two times the recommended intake level. This briny affair is one of the key factors in our non-communicable disease burden. In simple terms, our overconsumption of this nutrient is contributing to the development of several diseases. When we look at the heart and cardiovascular system, um, increased salt intake is associated with high blood pressure, with ischemic heart disease, with hypertensive heart disease, as well as heart failure. For the brain, it's associated with stroke, as well as dementia for the kidneys with chronic kidney disease and renal stones. Um, for the stomach, there is an association with increased risk of stomach cancer. For the bones, there's problems related to osteoporosis. High blood pressure or hypertension affects one in three Jamaicans and another third is prehypertensive. Salt consumption is also often accompanied by increased intake of calories, which increases the propensity for obesity. Given that the entire population is at risk of NCDs, given the significant impact and the burden of NCDs, it's imperative that there is sustained action to mitigate the effects of salt consumption. In 2021, the Ministry of Health and Wellness launched the Jamaica Salt Consumption Knowledge, Attitudes and Practice Jamaica Salt Cap Study. It was designed to provide local baseline data for strengthening strategies to eliminate overconsumption of salt within the population. The ministry is partnering with the National Non-Communicable Disease Committee, the National Health Fund and the University of the West Indies on the study. One important aspect of addressing the health concerns of any population is through research. 
This study, therefore, will help to determine the knowledge, attitude, and practices of our population as it relates to salt intake and strengthen the implementation of strategies to reduce. This project um, has specific objectives. So firstly, we aim to estimate the dietary sodium consumption among Jamaicans using spot urine sodium analyses. We want to evaluate the salt content in commonly consumed packaged foods sold in supermarkets. We also want to evaluate the sodium content in commonly used um, consumed foods in local restaurants. Um, then we will conduct a national survey to get information on knowledge, attitudes and practices regarding salt intake in Jamaica. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends less than 5 grams of sodium per day for adults and less than 2 grams for children under 11 years of age. One in 10 Jamaicans consume excess salt by adding it during cooking or at the table, as well as by frequent consumption of salty sauces or high-sodium processed foods. A significant amount of sodium also comes from ready-made meals and prepared foods, including processed meats, breakfast cereals, and snacks. It's a scenario where the entire population is at risk for NCDs. Minimizing this habit for excess salt in the diet of Jamaicans is one of several goals in forming the Ministry of Health and Wellness's NCD agenda. The mission to shake the salt habit begins with the young. Lowering sodium in children's diets today can help prevent heart disease later in life, especially for those who are overweight. Limit their consumption of salty snacks. And remember, no more than 2 grams per day from all food sources for those under 11 years of age. Let's also shop and cook smart. Use less or no salt when cooking and add more flavor to your food by using fresh herbs and salt-free seasoning instead. Also, keep a watch on the foods that are high in salt and limit the consumption. Take the time to carefully read the nutrition labels on food products to determine those providing the healthier options and be mindful of the portion size you consume. Also, seek out recipes for healthy, tasty meals that can be prepared with little or no salt. Jamaica is a signatory to the United Nations International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, which recognizes the right of everyone to the highest standard of health. And we believe that in order to achieve this, we must address the crises of NCDs and the role that excess salt, sugars and fats play in making Jamaicans susceptible to getting a lifestyle disease. Jamaica has committed to the World Health Organization voluntary target to reduce sodium or salt consumption by 30% by 2025. Achieving this requires buying from all stakeholders, including manufacturers, retailers, health professionals and consumers. We have a duty to ensure that Jamaicans are aware of the harmful effects of unhealthy diets and have access to important nutritional information which will allow them to make healthier food choices. It has to be tackled initially from the prevention perspective and the core of that is consumer information and then policies that encourage or nudges health-seeking behavior. We all must do our part to break this briny affair shake the salt habit and stay healthy. And that's all on the pages of Jamaica Magazine for today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for another show. Until then, there's more to watch on our YouTube channel and website, jis.gov.jm. Also, check out all the major social media platforms and our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Till next time, take care and keep safe. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.